Yeah. Oh. I dream it. It's so funny because Hannah's the executive producer, but she still asks me what she wants me to write in every email. Because he gets One very... day, I'll just be like, email this person and you'll know exactly what to say. Excuse you. What? I'm just saying. I do know what exactly to say, but you don't like when I'm overly nice to people in emails. I mean, no, you don't have to be. No, that's fine. You do your, you do you. Okay. All right. Um, and was hoping he could get an interview with the senator. Yeah. I'm going to try. Oh my god, that is so dumb. What? There's no direct flight. To Miami? Are you serious? It's Atlanta. To no, Miami. it's not. I'm like, you I've gotta... had a I've had a Are well, you serious? Let me try a different airline. I was gonna say, I was like, I've had a layover in Miami from Jacksonville. That just doesn't make sense. Let's see. This is why I need like a uh we need like a travel person. What do you call it? Like a, like a travel coordinator? Um, No, travel agent. No, like a travel, yeah, like a Marquesha travel coordinator. Okay. Hannah? <laughs> yes? Would you like to be the Marquesha travel coordinator? Totally. <clears throat> totally. Mm. Did you hear that voice squeak? Yes. Mark is not happy about it. <laughs> it's fine. Okay, I emailed her. What'd she say? She has not responded. Okay, here, nonstop. You found it? Yeah. Good. So I have a conundrum. Oh, what? Oh, no. What's your conundrum? Nobody under 30? Well, no. That's, <laughs> that's not it. Too many people under 30? No. All oh, the people are Never mind. Under. Problem solved. Oh, what was the conundrum? What was it? One of, uh, well, I had two that were under 30. Yeah. A male and a female. Yeah. And, and then one of I have one up. over 60 that's a male, so I, I, didn't know. Know, I didn't know if we were sticking with the... Male, female thing? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. But, we are we are always sticking with that. But problem solved. Great. Olivia is under 30? Yes. Did we card her? Yes. At the door. And Tom is over 60. He is 60. Ah, oh, squeaking it in right under. Oh, okay, so I got a response. Oh, what did it say? Hello, please reach out to the campaign and this person from the campaign. Great, do that. <laughs> okay. Whoa. What? There are two tickets remaining for the VIK table. Shut up, really? Are you serious? Yep. No way. No. Yep. Oh. Oh. Damn. <laughs> do you feel like you're you in high right. demand? What? I said, do you feel like you're in high demand? Yeah, look at that. Everybody wants to be a VIK. Everybody wants to be a VIK. <clears throat> Partying with the Patriots every day. When you're a VIK. I just wrote that. It was n number one bestseller. <laughs> Why are you? <laughs> oh my God, you hung your head in shame. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> I didn't mean to. You were so like, I can't believe she just said that. You know? Yeah, I know. Okay. Translucent powder. Yeah, I sent it to you. That was my nickname in college. I'm just kidding. What? <laughs> no, it wasn't. All right, I'm going to get three. 
Yeah, that's just that's ahead, good. right. So that way we're not always at crunch time. Yeah. How much do you have left? Like not a lot. It's already crumbling and. Oh um, yeah. Bad. Yeah. All right. All right. I messaged. <gasps> what? You sent it back to the same person, didn't you? No. You sent it to somebody else. No. Who'd you send it to? What did you do? <laughs> what did you do? Just fess up. Oh no. <laughs> just tell me what you did. Um. So I had originally wrote written to this girl Ansley and then I wrote to Lizzie but I copy and pasted the email so you wrote to the wrong person so I wrote to the right person but with the wrong wrong name name. way to go Hannah it's okay I'm gonna fix it right now now that there goes torpedoed the whole plan (laughs) no I didn't that's a rookie mistake right there you never you never copy paste the name you never do that you copy paste the body you never copy copy paste the body no but you also copy pasted the name no, but I also said thank you so much at, like, one of the last lines. No, you don't do This is why you keep it. See, this is what I'm trying to teach you. Okay. Keep it simple. Okay. Don't use people's names too much. Right. Got it. Just say, hey, you, or bud. I'd write, hi. Hi, friend. <laughs> hey, pal. What's up, bruh? Deb Martin wants to know what suit you decided on. Uh, Deb, you're going to have to sh- tune in on December the 1st or show up live, which would be better, or tune in uh, to find out which suit I chose, Ooh. which of the three suits I decided on, suit one, suit B, or suit three. I know which one, but I'll never tell. Jay will probably tell. You could probably slip him like five bucks. No. I need six I, let me tell Come you, on. I was disappointed. Six. What are we doing here? Uh, generation gap. Hmm. What is anybody really doing here? <laughs> Jay, that was so dark. <laughs> We're entertaining meets informative. This show makes the listener feel like it's my show. You make bad news sound good. Mark K for three hours a day. Love it! This is the Mark K Show. This is the Mark K Show. My name is Mark K. 855-940. Mark is the number. 855-940. Mark, if you're trying to get through for a generation gap, we need one contestant over the age of 60. We're going to pit you against a contestant under the age of 30. Do you think, <laughs> do you think she's calling for generation gap? Uh, nah, I know. she's not in the, the right time of age yeah uh of age. karen hi what's up you can ignore my open mics and messages all you want to mr clean i don't think we've been but i'm going to keep leaving them you will never get rid of karen whatever you want to call me i'm gonna call you darren <laughs> okay. darren thinks he knows everything he thinks he knows everything in the world and nothing is wrong and he knows and makes everything right he does not. He's a liar. He lies about things. What, uh, Karen, what has uh, Darren, a.k.a. me, what have I lied about? Please well, listen to Ohio is a stupid little b- What happened to Paul Pelosi was not funny. It was a crime. It was against the law. And anyone that's hit with a hammer and has a skull fracture shouldn't be made fun of. Mark, Darren is a jerk. Oh, God. Okay, right. <laughs> Mark, I like how she caught herself. Mark, I mean, Darren is a jerk. <laughs> I preferred Mr. Clean, personally. I'm going to be honest with you. I like Mr. Clean. Anyway, Karen, thanks so much for the call. We really uh, appreciate it. By the way, don't forget, Karen, limited number of VIK tickets available for the Ho Ho Hold'em Charity Poker Tournament, which, by the way, Jay, you have an update on that, right? I do. Jay was just on our website, kskids.com. Jay, what did you find out? There are two VIK tickets remaining. Shut up. What? Two VIK tickets. We started this morning with five. We're down to two? Yep. All right. Listen, if you want to sit at the VIK table, uh, you got to jump on it. Casekids.com. Otherwise, those things are probably going to sell out. I would would gather before the end of the show today. Uh, Plenty of other great tickets available. Uh, And, you know, full tables, all that stuff. But if you want the VIK experience with the special, very uh, very important Catriot seating and swag bag, then don't dilly dally. No dilly dally. Apparently, these things are even a hotter ticket item than we imagined. 855 940 Mark is our number. I would love for Karen to, 
to come and sit at our table with us. Would you pay for her ticket? I would not. It's a charity event. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a charity event. But you know what I would do? Actually, I would. You know, like in uh, tennis, they have the the uh, what do you call? Who's the guy that yells fault? Double fault. Like the line judge. Yeah, and he sits like way higher than everybody, like on one of those really big lifeguard looking yeah, chairs. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I think we should get one of those for Karen, put it at best bet, and she can just yell crap at us while we're playing poker. <laughs> like if I, I love this idea. Like if I fold, she can be like, hey, Darren, you suck at poker, stupid. You're so bad. You Joe, had a full house. Joe Biden's a better <laughs> poker player than you are, Mr. Clean. And if you, like, lose a bunch of chips or something, you're like, Hannah, piles of chips going somewhere else. <laughs> you all suck. That'd be great. Just That'd have be her, wonderful. Just have her just taunt us and troll us live. The yeah. I, would, I, would, I would pay for that, for sure. 855-940-MARK is our number. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a little, what do we call this thing? Generation Gap. That's right, Generation Gap. I'd like to point out, by the way, that our edition, our version of Generation Gap, has now lasted longer than the television show that we stole it from. So, hey. bravo. Oh, wow. Pew, yeah. pew, pew. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Good job. Thank you, Jay. Uh-oh. Oh, hockey's oh, going no. slow again. What is going on? We need to probably reboot these things. Probably. No. Anyway, we're going to get a lot of pew, pew, pews here in just a minute. Uh, in the meantime, we pew, will meet... Pew, 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 <laughs> I told you. Yikes. We, in the meantime, let's meet our contestants, shall we? Let's do it. All right. First up, we have Olivia. She's in Jacksonville, Florida. Hi, Olivia. How are you? Olivia? Olivia? Can you hear oh, me? Oh, there you are. Oh, phew. Sorry. I thought, yeah. I, oh, I, thought okay. I I thought I accidentally hung up on you. Olivia, hi. Thank you for calling the Mark K Show. How are you? I am great. How are you? Doing very well. Doing very. We've sold out of almost all of our VIK tickets, so I'm really, I'm super thrilled about that. Uh, Olivia, are you under thirty or are you over sixty? I am under thirty. All right, fantastic. So you're going to be our, uh, well, our under thirty contestant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're going to be playing against Tom, who's in Yuli, Florida. Hi, Tom. How are you? All right. How you doing? Good, Tom. Are you sixty or older? Yes, I am. Oh, look at that. Fantastic. I figured that out using. Uh, <laughs> What, that's what they call uh, context clues. Yeah, context clues. Or I was going to say, um, what do you call process it? Process of uh, elimination. Thank you. See, Jay gets it. Process yep. of elimination. All right. Uh, so here's what's going to happen next, folks. We're going to ask you guys some questions from each other's generation. So, for example, Olivia, we'll ask you questions about Tom's generation that he would know, but you might not. And Tom, vice versa, will ask you about Olivia's generation. If you get the question right, you get a point. If you don't, your opponent gets to try and steal, and it'll be a lot easier for them because, like I said before, it'll be about their actual generation. Um, so, Olivia, Tom, are you guys ready to go? Yes. Okay. Perfect, perfect. When your business... Pardon me, I'm sorry about that. We were so we we're so rudely interrupted by a YouTube ad. Uh, all right, Olivia, we're going to start with you. Listen carefully. Here is your first question. Are you ready? Yeah. In 1990, Iraq invaded which country, leading to Operation Desert Storm, aka the Gulf War? Uh the. Let's. See, I'm just gonna take a wild guess. Yeah, just do that. Okay. Um, Iran. Iraq invaded Iran, which led to Operation Desert Storm, aka the Gulf War. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. That is incorrect. Tom, do you know in 1990 which country Iraq invaded? No, I do not. Oh, you want to take a wild guess? Don't guess Iran. <laughs> No, I'm gonna. I, I just lost it. Oh, it was. Uh, it was Kuwait. It was Kuwait. Iraq inv invaded Kuwait, and then there was Operation Desert Shield, which led to Desert Storm, which led to the Gulf War. Uh, anyway, that's okay. We don't want to relive all that. Uh, anyway, th no points awarded yet. Tom, your first question: Are you ready? Yes. Here we go. Tom, what color are Live Strong bracelets? Live Strong bracelets? Yeah, what color are those Live Strong bracelets? <laughs> Blue, yellow, and red? I need one color. They're one solid color. Oh, one yeah. color? Yeah, just one. Let's, I'll say pink. You're going to say pink? Yeah. That's a good guess. It's not pink. Olivia, what color? Yellow. What? Yellow. <laughs> yellow. Oh, my God, it's yellow. That is like, correct. I remember. <laughs> I know, Live Strong. Yeah, Live Strong bracelets. Uh, Tom, that was that whole Lance Armstrong thing. Remember, he had the Live Strong bracelets because he had cancer, and then he won all the Tour de France's, and then we found out he did roids, and then they 
took it all away from him. And it's like the guy never existed. All right, Olivia, you have a point and you get the next question. Are you ready? Yes. What is the name of Elvis Presley's Memphis, Tennessee mansion home? Ooh, I feel like I know this. Mm, we're going to find out. <laughs> what is the name of so Elvis so Presley's? Wait, I do. Oh, okay. Graceland, right? Graceland. So. Is that your, your answer? Yeah, Graceland. Graceland. Graceland, Graceland, Graceland. That is correct. Yeah. Nice to have you. Yeah, that was very good. I'm so proud. That was very good, yeah. All right, uh, Tom. It was also a uh, Paul Simon song in the 80s. Tom, are you ready? Yes. All right, you, did you just ask me who Paul Simon was? <laughs> no. <laughs> I whispered it. <laughs> okay. It's Tom's turn. Fun fact, when you whisper into a microphone, everybody can still hear you. <laughs> who is Paul Simon? What, you heard that? Oh, my God. Oh, no. All right, uh, Tom. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I'm so stupid. I'll never do that again. Dang it. All right. Tom, are you are you ready for your next one? Yes. Here we go. Uh, what is the name of the roller skate tennis, tennis shoe hybrid that was very popular with kids at the mall during the early 2000s? Can I call my daughter? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. She would be an under 30. Content. Your job is to know what your daughter was doing. It, oh, she, well, well, don't call her out. Uh, okay. Name the shoe roller skate hybrid that was very popular during the early 2000s, Tom. Roller blades. Roller blades. Good guess. Not it, though. Uh, roller blades were just the skates. You couldn't walk around in them. Olivia, do you know? Yes. What are wheelies? What are what? Wheelies. Spell that for me. W A. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. <laughs> um, that's incorrect. You can stop at W. It's Heelys. Oh. Hey, oh I yeah. I I messed up the W for the H. Yeah, no, that's you should. It's a silent W. You don't. Know, you, <laughs> you right. I'm sorry. It's Wheelies. Uh, you should have called Tom's daughter. She definitely would have known. Uh, all right, uh, Olivia, that's okay. It's back to you. Are you ready for your next question? Yes. <laughs> Here we go. What 1968 science fiction classic featured a power-hungry computer named Hal? H-A-L. No W. Um, I don't know that one. What 1968 science fiction movie featured a power-hungry computer named Hal? H A L. This might sound dumb, but I'm gonna say Ghostbusters. You're gonna say what? Ghostbusters. 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 I'm sorry, that is incorrect. It was not Ghostbusters. Tom, what 1968 science fiction movie classic featured a power hungry computer named Hal? Dude, I am so stupid. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> you, are not, you are not wrong. False. You are not. You just have better things to do than sit around at the movies. <laughs> I have no idea. You don't want to take a guess? You don't want to take a guess? You want to guess at all? Or you want to? Now I feel bad. I you, want to, no you, you want to call your daughter no real quick? No idea. No idea. It was 2001, A Space Odyssey. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Still never heard of it. Oh. What are you doing, Dave? You don't remember that? No? Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Tom, it's okay. You can get on the board. with It's still anyone's game, man. It's still anyone's game. Here we go. Are you ready for your next one? Yes. All right. Here we go. Which children's TV show that aired between... Ni <laughs> okay. You're what? 1994 to 1994. What? It doesn't matter. What I children's TV show that aired in the 90s <laughs> featured Miss Frizzle... Who took her students on lots of fun adventures? Yeah, I'm stupid. Which children's TV <laughs> show that aired between 1994 and some other date featured a teacher named Miss Frizzle who took her students on lots of fun adventures? I have no idea again. No clue. You want to take a guess? No, because those names aren't ringing a bell. Oh, all right. <laughs> all right. Ah. What, like, what do you think, Olivia? Do you know the answer? I do. It is the Magic School Bus. That is correct. And the, the final episode date was 97. 97. Okay, 73. That'd be perfect. All there right, were, Olivia. They were books first, though, weren't they? They were. But this was about the TV but, show. Jay, uh, Hannah doesn't read. Excuse no. you. Yes, I do. <laughs> Olivia, are you ready for your next one? 
Yeah. All right. In the 50s, both Davy Crockett and Daniel Boone wore what type of hat? Oh, gosh. I can see it in my head, but what's the name of it? Mm. Yeah. Hold on. Let me look into your head. Oh, yep. You got it. But we just need to know the name. <laughs> in, oh, the f- in the 50s, both Davy Crockett and Daniel Boone wore what type of hat? I mean, a, a coon hat. A raccoon hat. I will... I will accept raccoon hat. The technical the technical term is a coon skin cap, but raccoon hat is close I enough. I think raccoon hat's way more adorable. All right, Tom, one more question here. You ready, buddy? Yeah. By the way, if you get this one, I might just go ahead and give you a prize pack too. I might just go ahead. I already know what question you're going to ask. What was TikTok known as oh. before it was TikTok? I got to hang up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> Tom, it was... <laughs> uh, uh, I'll take that as a... Yeah. Olivia, what do you think? What was TikTok known as before it was TikTok? Ooh. See, I don't, I don't TikTok. I'm not... I am in the generation, but I don't... I don't keep up on that because... Bad for you. But um, I'm going to say the app Vine... Do you remember that? I do remember Vine. I do. We were just talking about Vine this morning. Vine was actually a uh, a Twitter invention that Elon Musk is thinking of now bringing back. It was not Vine. It was Musically. Mm. 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 She's like, I didn't do that crap either. Uh, that's okay. Yep. With with a score of four to zero, Olivia, congratulations, you <laughs> you are our big winner today. Nicely done. <laughs> We're going to hook you up with a Mark Show prize pack. Tom, listen, buddy, you did. You had some hard questions. And like I said, you've just been you've just been a lot more, a lot busier than most people doing probably way more important things. Uh, but we thank you for playing and we thank you for calling. I appreciate it. Congratulations. Yeah, that was, that was so, I felt so bad for that guy. Now, hang on one second, Olivia. This game's supposed to bring joy, not feelings of, you know. Olivia did great. No, Olivia did great. Uh, I love you did great. Anyway, a quick break, folks. More of the Mark K Show is coming up right after this. Tom's yeah. a- I'm just going to hang up, dude. Tom's like, uh, Tom's, this was, a- Tom's like, this is a damn mistake. Tom sounded like Hank Hill. <laughs> oh, hell, I don't know, Mark. I don't watch that crap. <laughs> I loved it. Can I call my daughter? That was so great. Oh, damn. I don't know that one. I'm not even going to take a guess. I thought I'm you were so going to play stupid. Old Town Road. I, there's no point. There's, this is adding insult to injury. I was just going to like put him out of his misery with the TikTok question. And I know. thought you were asking maybe the Justin Bieber question. No, I, I don't want anyone leaving like feeling that, God, I can't list that. Mark show made me feel so dumb. I don't want that to happen. That already happens with Jay every Tuesday. And Hannah every Tuesday. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Tuesdays must be like, you know, feel bad about yourself Tuesdays or something. It's true. So... I was saying how Tuesdays are my least favorite day of the week. My friend Paola was like, what? No, Mondays are the worst day of the week. And I said, no, let me tell you why Tuesdays suck. What's wrong with Tuesdays? Tuesdays have always been my least favorite day of the week. Who has a least favorite day of the week? Hi, me. (laughs) Hello? (laughs) Here, hello. Why is it Tuesday? Okay, so. Wait a minute. Okay. Do you want me to do this? Yes, I'm ready now. I'm ready now. Okay. So Tuesdays are the worst day of the week because Mondays, you're still like on the high of the weekend. You know, you're like, oh, you know what? The weekend, it was just, you know, like a day ago. I'm still happy. It was still great. Tuesdays, you're not quite to the middle of the week yet. You have nothing to look forward to. It's only the second day of the work week. (laughs) And so you're just, it's the middle. It's just, it's the bad day. But Wednesday, you're like, ta-da, it's such a great day because it's the middle of the week. It's almost Friday. And Thursday, it's actually almost Friday. And then Friday is Friday. That's why Tuesdays are the worst. No? That makes sense to me. Uh, Oh, my mom said that dad had a Kuwaiti Liberation Medal. Oh, that's cool. That's super cool. I'm a little shocked he didn't get that one, I'll be honest with you. I am too, because I was like, I, I thought that that was just something that everyone. Well, I mean, I'd like, least, at least know, if you were alive. I don't know. If you listen to news talk during that time. Yeah. Like that's all they were talking about. 
Um, Ka- Catherine Lynn, six minutes ago, says, hot mic, Hannah, when I was joking about the whispering in the microphone. That was funny. That was good. Okay, I'll be back. Bye, Hannah. Bye. By the way, don't forget, you have to be keeping track of stuff for... Or, yeah, we can review the... Okay, good. All right, sure. Just checking. One VIK ticket remaining. One VIK ticket remaining. Nice. That is, that's impressive. That's impressive. Is that a record? Well, no, this is the We've first time we've done it. Yeah. Tickets. So, yes. I wonder if it will be gone before we get back from break. Keep refreshing now to see if it's going to be gone. Do you know who gets them? Do I? Yeah. Do you get um, like an email letting you know? I or? don't. Dreams Come True does. Oh, ah, okay. And I assume, um, yeah, I can find out. Cause, well, we're going to, yeah, we're, we'll get a list so that we know who's sitting where. Um, that way someone can't come up and go, I bought a ticket. Like, you'll get the actual ticket when you get there. Yeah. We'll make, like, golden tickets. That's a great idea. We should make golden tickets. I like that. Yeah. I've got a golden ticket. Who buys a single ticket? Dude, I'd buy a single ticket. <laughs> People whose wives don't want to go play poker. Duh. <laughs> Sure, whistling a lot today. Tuesday's my favorite day. <laughs> I don't hate any days. I'll be honest with you. My, my wife hates Sundays um, because the Jaguars play. <laughs> okay, that's not everybody in Jacksonville hates Sundays. No, but my wife doesn't like Sundays because she's like back to the week, you know, the kids and, and school and back. stuff. Sorry. Mark K Show. My name is Mark K. 855 mark is our number. 855 A really great round of Generation Gap. I do feel bad, though. I do feel bad because, um, uh, you know, our, our one uh, over 60 player left and saying he wanted to hang up. He wasn't feeling it. Didn't feel like he'd put his best foot forward. And I never want anyone leaving this show. Like, I don't want anyone, uh, you know, to, to listen to the show or be part of the show and walk away feeling like they're dumb or subpar or not intelligent because that's not my goal. Uh, especially on Tuesdays, because Jay already feels that way on Tuesday after I whoop him in a, on American Trivia Warrior, which is coming up, by the way, a little later on. It's about an hour or so away. But uh, so, we, and again, this is this show is not just supposed to be for your entertainment, but it's for your learning uh, pleasure. You may learn something, something about history, something about the past, something about the present, something about the election, something about politics or this country, something you may not have known. And if you can walk away learning something new, then that is uh, that is one of my goals, and that's one of the things. But I don't ever want anyone to, to go away feeling sad or subpar, uh, again, except for Jay on Tuesdays. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. All right, coming up, the elections are a week away, and just before the midterm elections, Elon Musk, who just recently purchased Twitter, has taken away one of the Democrats' favorite toys. Some people call it a tool. I call it a toy. Uh, it's basically a toy for tools. He's taken away. He has stripped the Democrats uh, of one of their most favorite prized possessions. He's taken away their ability to censor conservatives. Not only that, but he's starting. Uh, he's uh, got a, a, a plan in his mind that he's teasing on Twitter to start taxing Twitter power users. And one of them, a.k.a. the king of horror, is very, very upset. We'll share with you his plan to uh, to keep the Democrats, well, heads exploding uh, all through this next election cycle right after this. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned to The Mark K Show. Thanks for that. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Words of uh, encouragement. Yeah, there. I just trying to, you know, <laughs> some people like when they get angry, they do really well. 
It's like you know? that. It's like that picture I showed you on uh, Twitter the other day. Yeah, yeah, just like that. The the rumble, the rumble chat poking me and going do something. Right, right, yeah, <laughs> that's right. That was funny. <laughs> that was great. I love that. Jay, is he awake? Put a someone put a mirror under his nostrils. <laughs> I don't think he's breathing. Hannah, you're back. Hi. Hi. Uh, she does not think that they will have time for an interview. Probably because you call her the wrong name. Oh my gosh, no. <laughs> right back. Right back. Your loss, amigo. <laughs> or should I respond? Is it because I called you the wrong name? <laughs> Do that. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll show you for calling me the wrong name. Right back. Okay, fine. We're voting for Val Demings. No. <laughs> I can't even joke about that. <laughs> Hold me closer, time to dance and sing. <laughs> Why was the plumber depressed? Because he was all out of crack. Yikes. What? Get it? I said the plumber, not not Hunter Biden. <laughs> uh, because he couldn't lay the pipe. I don't know. See, your joke was just as bad as mine. <laughs> His career was going down the toilet. Mm. Man, neither of us. <laughs> I think Hannah's and I were way better than the actual. <laughs> yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. No. <laughs> oh yeah, wasn't I supposed to go in Jay's room? <laughs> yeah. Now keep your sickness out of here. You're sick. I'm not sick. <laughs> oh my. I think I'm high from your fumes just now. That was straight <laughs> rubbing alcohol. You're welcome. Uh, by the way, did anyone get good candy last night? I. Yeah. Did you go trick or treating? No. Oh. No, I. Was, oh, my plan worked. By the way, did it really? My Hershey bar plan. My wife had like twenty Hershey bars. We gave away six. Nice. That's it. Yeah. Oh, what about the security cameras? Scream cams. Nobody came. It was great. Seriously. It was very quiet. I'm a little disappointed. Yeah, did the kids very... go trick or treating? No. Ah. They handed out the six candy bars, did their homework, watched some football, went to bed. Oh. Typical Monday. That's so sad. You didn't watch like Halloween movies or anything? No. We did that like on the weekend. They watched, like, Charlie Brown, Halloween thing. I have to ask a sincere question. Are your kids, are all the classes that they're in, are they all AP classes? I just assume that they are. Um, they're not all of them. The majority are. Yeah. I figured. And then they're in this IB program, so some of them are pre-IB. Oh. Yeah. So it's, oh, look. That's fancy. Kate's, what? Kate's kids posted this. I should post hey, oh, yeah. Can I post that now? Yeah, you can post it now. Also, do you have to write to all the markets? Do you want me to write to Marque Show Group? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And just say, hey, guys, we announced the Ho Ho Hold'em Charity Poker Tournament today. Here's the link if you guys want to share it, and here's the graphic. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. I can totes do that. Thanks. And then it's right back. Thanks. Shango. I'll probably do that first. Do you want the graphic to be sent to them or just the yeah, website? Yeah, no, send them the graphic so they can use, they okay. can use it. Uh, how can I get that on my computer? I'll send it to myself. Do you like the way I think? Yeah. <laughs> um, Okay. Got to go to Outlook on my phone. It's been a really good Tuesday, though. Guess really? what? You were just complaining about how you hated Tuesdays. I do, typically. Yes, what? Guess what? What? They're gone. What? They're gone. Are you serious? Oh, my God. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's just crazy. That's crazy. In the words of Val Demings. <laughs> Sold out. Bam. Bam. Twenty five hundred. Bank it. 
10 bands, 50 bands, 100 bands. Okay. Jay, you want to be the bearer of the bad news? Sure. Okay. Jay's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I Let's do. do it. This is weird. Um, hmm. Hmm. It's just not showing. Oh, there it is. Got it. I think Done. I'm going to have to get new earphones soon. Why? Is it crackling? Because it's like going in and out. I hate that. Uh, are you sure it's not the connection? The uh or the radio, or Apparently it could be the radio station. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing I have another pair right here. Okay. Well, we're good then. Yeah. You change up the tune. I know. Do you need new headphones? Is he good? Can you hear me? Hello? Do you need headphones? He's changing his. He has them. Oh, okay. Good He said, good thing I have my second pair right. You should always have a spare pair of headphones. Spare pair. A spare of headphones. Fair pair. And an extra Meaning meets informative. This show makes the listener feel like it's my show. You make bad news sound good. Mark K for three hours a day. Loving it! This is the Mark K Show. Mark K, how come it... Every time Nancy Pelosi leaves town, Paul gets hammered. <laughs> Mark. Uh, you know what? Let's move on, shall we? 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-MARK. Before we get to this Twitter story, before we get to Elon Musk just making every single blue check left-leaning liberal head explode simultaneously, Jay has a major announcement regarding the Ho Ho Hold'em charity poker tournament. Now, we announced this thing, what, like an hour, a little over an hour ago, right? That was uh, just an over an hour ago. Yeah. yeah. Right at the beginning of the show, we talked all about how this was our, we were making some major changes but some really fun and exciting changes. We were opening it up to everybody in Ohio and Oklahoma and all over. We got you a great deal on hotel rooms, and we've uh, we've we boosted the number of people per table. Plus, we came up with something called the VIK Experience. Remember that? Yes. Yeah. I do. Yeah, a prize package, VIK exclusive live streaming table featuring the three of us partying with us all night long. We only Ooh. had five of those tickets an hour ago. Jay. Jay, will you please let everybody know, at this moment, how many VIK tickets remain? Not a one. Wow. Uh, Look at that, man. Uh, All right, well, I told you, you snooze, you lose, especially in this instance. Now, the good news is there's tons of seats available. Not at the live stream VIK table, but you still get the full experience, the dinner, the drinks, the camaraderie, the prizes, the fun. And if you play your cards right, literally, you could still end up at the VIK table in the later rounds battling for that grand prize, $1,000 cash, the K's Kids Ho Ho Hold'em uh, Charity Poker Tournament Trophy, and of course, the title of Best Poker Player Ever. Uh, okay. Ever. Why are you why are you diluting it, Hannah? No, I'm not. Yes, best ever in the whole world in all of time in existence. <laughs> That's right. Hang in it. 855 mark is our number. 855 mark If you'd like one of those tickets, if you'd like a table, if you want to join us on December the 1st, it's easy to do. All you got to do is go to K's Kids. Dot com K's kids dot com and get yourself a ticket uh, and join in the fun December the 1st best bet here in Jacksonville. All right, let's talk a little bit about Twitter. A couple big things going on with Twitter today, and both of them are really making liberals just so mad. Remember, Twitter was their domain. They believed that big tech, and this is a lesson everybody, they believed that big tech was theirs. They controlled it. Facebook, YouTube, Google, even LinkedIn and Pinterest and Spot, all these places. Big Tech, San Francisco, 
Silicon Valley, it was all theirs. They got to do with whatever they wanted. They had all the money. They had all the power. They got uh, in cahoots with Washington, D.C., as we now know, because the Department of Homeland Security was, was working in tandem with all, of these, with all of these big tech companies, these social media assets, to tell them, yeah, you know what, we'd like you to censor this information. And no, we want this information to live free. We want it to spread like wildfire. Hunter Biden story, yeah, you know what, uh, the FBI is going to give you a call. They'd like you to, to suppress that story because we believe it's Russian disinformation, even though it's coming from the, the very reputable 200-year-old New York Post founded by founding father Alexander Hamilton. Uh, a well-sourced and well, uh, you know, uh, uh, well um, editorialized newspaper that rarely, if ever, has to retract anything because they do their due diligence, especially with stories of national importance like Hunter Biden and his laptop and the emails and the photos and things that could have cast a shadow on Joe Biden's presidency had the FBI and big tech not worked in conjunction to, well, bury it from the public. So now Elon Musk rolls on in, and look, Elon Musk is no hyper-conservative. Elon Musk is no ultra-maga Donald Trump supporter. Don't be, the, you know, he, the guy makes electric cars for crying out loud. He's part of the Green New Deal crowd, but he's also big into free speech. He's big into the individual rights of the American you know, person. He's also into capitalism, free market capitalism, and the trading of goods and services of value for cash. So he's doing a couple of things, like I said, that's really upsetting not just the liberals in Silicon Valley, but all over the world, and most specifically in Washington. One of the things he's doing, as Breitbart reports, is limiting employee access to Twitter's censorship tools. Now, these are not the people he already fired. These aren't the big wigs who kicked Donald Trump off the platform, kicked Alec jo Alex Jones off the platform, kicked Project Veritas off the platform, and suppressed the Babylon Bee for their satirical headlines about Joe Biden. Not those folks. Those folks are long gone. The people that are still at Twitter who had the power to censor, to lock out accounts, to delete accounts, all these things, they've been locked out of the censorship tools. Bloomberg reports that Elon Musk's Twitter has frozen some employees' access to tools designed to enforce the site's content moderation policies, curtailing the power of employees to ban accounts, remove posts, and other acts of censorship in what the outlet says curbs the staff's ability to clamp down on misinformation ahead of a major U.S. election. Now, now look at the, the, the two different sides of this in the one Bloomberg story. They say that it is uh, it is it is curtailing the power of employees to do these acts of censorship, which is what they are, in what Bloomberg is calling uh, the ability to clamp down on misinformation. Now, misinformation we find out a lot of times is relative. What you believe to be misinformation is not necessarily misinformation. Take, for example, again the aforementioned Babylon Bee satirical headlines. That's a joke, but to a fact checker, that is Russian misinformation that is detrimental to our democracy, which, fun fact, doesn't even exist because we live uh, in a republic. Most people who work in Twitter's trust and safety organization are currently unable to alter or penalize accounts that break rules around misleading information, offensive posts, and hate speech. Interesting. The concern that has social media company, which jettisoned trust and safety arch censor Vijaya Gaddy, as well as CEO Parag Agrawal in some of Musk's first moves, may not be able to effectively interfere in the midterms. This is their big concern. Now that Twitter's employees can't arbitrarily delete, censor, lock out, or suppress information, tweets, links on Twitter without the say-so of somebody higher up, we're assuming at this point Elon Musk, they can't control what information is being spread prior to the election. If there's a Hunter Biden bombshell coming out later today or tomorrow, Twitter won't be able to suppress it, and that thing could, and probably will, spread like wildfire. If there's more uh, Joe Biden gaffes, like him saying he traveled to all 54 states, then that thing can continue to spread like wildfire. If there's clips of Raphael Warnock that put him in a bad position, if there's stories about Stacey Abrams lying about being an election denier, if there's anything at all that is detrimental to the Democrats' ability to maintain control in the midterm elections, that stuff can spread on Twitter. Two years ago, Twitter would never allow it. 
what they claimed was misinformation was just information that they wanted you to miss. And that's how they got around it. That has been lifted. The gloves are off. Twitter is a free uh, asset for all uh, ways of life, all thoughts, all political parties. And they can't handle it because for the longest time they've been in control. Something else that really angered a lot of liberals was an idea Elon Musk floated to raise money for Twitter. Keep in mind, Twitter is a business. You wouldn't know it because they've been on the verge of bankruptcy. And in fact, when Donald Trump entered the race, Twitter was on the auction block. As people don't really understand the Twitter, uh, you know, the history of this organization. Twitter was this close. And if you're if you're not watching on our live stream, I'm holding my thumb and my forefinger ridiculously close together. You could maybe slide one thin sheet of paper between how close I'm holding them together. They were this close to declaring bankruptcy. They were looking for offers to sell way back in 2014 and 2015. Nobody wanted it. Why? Nobody saw value in it. Nobody saw how it could be lucrative at all. Well, Donald Trump announced that he was going to run for president. Donald Trump chose Twitter as his direct pipeline, his vein, to pump information directly from his head out to the public and bypass the mainstream media bypassing the media that was twisting and turning the narrative and using their power against him and his political campaign. He took to Twitter and he turned it into something that nobody else had dreamed it could be. It was a way for high power individuals and politicians to bypass the media and get their message directly to the people. And it worked like a charm. And all of a sudden, Twitter was everywhere. Everybody was tweeting. Twitter became the number one news source. You could turn on the news, Fox News, MSNBC, NBC, ABC, CBS, it doesn't matter. And they would use a graphic of a Donald Trump tweet on their newscast. It was an incredible amount of free advertising for the platform, and it saved them. Donald Trump saved Twitter. And Twitter repaid him by booting him from the platform. Fast forward two years, Twitter finds itself on the brink. Elon Musk comes in and says, you guys have been mismanaging this place. You're selling advertising at a, at a bum rate. You're spending money. It's 7,000 employees. Are you out of your mind? Free matcha lattes and red wine on tap. Are you kidding me? What is this stupid log cabin meditation room in the San Francisco headquarters? What is that even for? You guys don't know how to run a company. You're running a, you're running a, a daycare for, for elitist children who went to college but never learned how to earn a living. So they just come here, hang out, play skee-ball. Every now and then they censor somebody off of the account, and you think that's a viable business model? It's not. Here's $44 billion. Give it to me and leave. And the, the shareholders, the investors, were all like, done. See ya. Take it. Wouldn't want to be ya. So now Elon Musk needs to turn a profit. And the one thing he uh, suggested, which really ticked a whole bunch of high-profile Twitter users off, was charging for the blue check mark. Anybody who's been on Twitter, anyone who's familiar knows that the blue check mark is gold. I mean, it's blue, but it's gold. It is what it is the end all be all. People will will they will give their firstborn some of them for that blue check mark. Nobody really knows how you get one. It's a little arbitrary. You've got to, I guess, be a celebrity. You've got to be somebody someone would want to impersonate. You've got to, I imagine, use the platform in some regularity. And they have to verify that it is you. And if you get a blue verified check mark next to your name, man, that opens up a whole new world. You get followers. You get friends. You get brand deals. You get credibility. People know it's you. And for whatever reason, whether they've heard of you or not, they think you are somebody. Because Twitter has verified your identity. Why would they do that if your identity wasn't something somebody would want to copy? Man, you got a blue check mark? You're cool. Well, Elon Musk said, all right, if you'd like to keep your blue check mark, I'm going to charge you $20 a month. $20 a month. This is from Mashable. Elon Musk, the newly crowned chief twit, wants people to pony up for that blue check mark. The jokes about it uh, came pretty quickly. Nicole Gallucci said, remember me as I was verified. Apparently she doesn't want to pay $20. Rebecca Fishbein, I won't pay $20 a month for Twitter verification, but I'd pay it to stop getting Democrat fundraising emails. I'd pay for both. Hank Green, hilarious thing is I'm a current Twitter Blue subscriber, but I'll need to unsubscribe if they make verification conditional to having a Twitter Blue subscription. And he goes on and on and on and on. 
Uh, everybody's all up in arms. John Boys charging $20 a month to be verified would be a great way to change the verified badges messaging from I'm a loser to I'm a huge effing loser. <laughs> and none, none were more upset than uh, horror author Stephen King. Of course. <laughs> Stephen King... And this is a this is a great Stephen King to me is the ultimate in elite Democrat snobbery. Stephen King tweeted out twenty dollars a month to keep my blue check. F that they should pay me if that gets institu instituted. I'm gone like Enron. Now, keep in mind, this is very interesting because Stephen King, who uses Twitter, no one forced him to no one asked him to no one hired him to. No one begged him to come on the platform. Stephen King chose to use Twitter. For whatever reason, he got verified with his blue check mark. He believes that his content, his 120 character or 240 character or whatever it is now, he believes that the little minuscule words and memes and angry troll, anti-conservative Donald Trump sucks comments that he posts there daily are worth so much to Twitter that they should be paying him. To stay on the platform. And that blue check mark, that blue check mark is so important to him that he it won't even this guy is a multi-bazillionaire. Every book, a bestseller for 30 years, movie deals, television deals, branding deals. Guy lives in a massive, massive mansion in Maine. Maine has a very low cost of living. This guy could buy and sell Twitter on his own, probably, yet he won't pony up 20 bucks a month for a blue check mark. Why is that? Well, because he's an elitist liberal and they believe everything should be free and that if you are Stephen King and you're a movie maker and an author and you're some big wig Democrat supporter and you hate Donald Trump, they should be honored to have you on their platform creating content. They should be honored. Nobody said he has to leave the, the platform. Nobody said they don't want his tweets. They just want him to pony up for that blue check mark. But he won't do it because when you're a Democrat elitist, Everybody should worship you, and you should get everything for free. Or better yet, you should just pay me for doing nothing. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. I wish I could lease out my blue check mark. If you were willing to pay me like 20 bucks a month, I'd let you have mine. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know that it's ever done me any good. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-MARK. Quick break, folks. More Mark K Show is on the way. Stay tuned. <laughs> Did you see this tweet? I think it was... Uh... This is from the day before yesterday. This is fake. I did not tweet out a link to the New York Times because it's a screenshot from the New York Times. This is Elon Musk. And it says, Elon Musk, in a tweet, shares link from site known to publish false news. So Elon goes, this is fake. I did not tweet out a link to the New York Times. That's funny. <laughs> he's like the ultimate troll, and he's rich, so he's able to be, like, even better about it. Man, I, I want to be – I'm only one of those things. A troll? Yeah. I wish I were both. I mean – you're like regular rich. I'm not even. Well, I want to like, be like Elon Musk rich, though. Yeah. Like I didn't win that billion dollar Powerball. And you didn't win his his electric truck. No, I I didn't. I was gonna buy one of those, but it never. I, it never happened. Never, you know, nothing ever came of it. I know. Um, he also looks baller in his Halloween costume. What is that? Some kind of something. Or I other. think he looks like a warrior. It looks like if Iron Man was from. A thousand years ago. <laughs> right. I don't know what he is, but he looks cool. Yeah. Also, I love that he loves his mom. It's adorable. It says Halloween with mom. I mean, have mom. you seen his mom? She's cool. She was like a model. I saw that. I looked at pictures of her back when, like, she used to model. She was gorgeous. I mean, she's still pretty, but, you know. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to send out this email. Cool? I wrote it all up. You double check it and make sure you're sending it to the right person. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Good? Fair enough. We announced the Ho Ho Hold'em Poker Tournament benefiting K's Kids earlier today. If anyone wants to come and play or just watch, there are tickets available at, and then I set, provided the link, and then I said the tournament will take place on Thursday, December 1st, blah, 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 blah. Let me know if you have any questions or need any more information from me. Have a terrific Tuesday. Good? Perfect. Okay, sweet.
<clears throat> I need to be on Twitter more just to see Elon's tweets. It's cool, though. He's, like, providing more and more information, and he's so quick about it. You will also get priority in replies, mentions, and search, which is essential to defeat spam slash scam. Mm. Ability to post long video and audio. Oh, that's good. Um, yeah, we're going to have to do it because that's all we do. Yeah, and half as many ads. That's great. It's just like, you know what's so funny? Mm. Well, I should probably talk about it as a leader. Okay. He said, and pay well bypass. What is pay well bypass? Pay well bypass? It says, and pay well bypass for publishers willing to work with us. I don't know. Huh. Okay. I'm liking this new Twitter, though. Yeah, this is great. Also, he dressed up. I don't know if he dressed up his corgi in a Twitter shirt, but it's amazing. Oh, that's the uh, Shiba Inu or whatever. Or a Shiba Inu? It's for Dogecoin. Of course it is. Why did I not know that? I don't know. Sorry. Is but that his Shiba Inu? I don't know. It's probably just some picture somebody took. Hmm. What were we going to say? Whoa, Doge, 14 cents. Boom. Yo. Nice. It got up to 15 yesterday. It's hanging it tough at 14 cents. Oof. I gave my son another thousand dose when he's asked. He offered to buy it. Whiskey is wanting to know if you are all good and set for tomorrow. I mean, yes. What do you need me to do? I How are we you, connected? I forwarded you that email like three days ago. I mean, what? I was supposed to. Sorry, where? two days ago. Okay. To which one? Both of them. Is it from Hannah Geik? That's me. Oh, I didn't post. Paywall. Oh, was my eyesight just being bad? That's very, oh, paywall. Yeah. Where it, we fake I, news before and after. Here are more questions. Mega match game. There's no, fake news. I got nothing. That's not me. true. It's in my sent. I can tell you exactly when I sent it. To which email? I'm looking. Hold on. I sent you an email too. I got yours. Okay, with the the song. Yeah. It was word. I got nothing from you. October 31st at 10.57 a.m. To which email? To oh, to both of them. Nope. It, I will send it again because it says to both. It says to Mark, comma, Mark. Is it in your sent or in your draft? In my sent. Are you sure? Positive. Check your draft folder. No, I'm just going to send it again. Show. My name is Mark K. 855 940 Mark is our number. 855 Thanks so much for joining us. By the way, uh, the VIK tickets sold out, but don't look, don't think that the tournaments, oh, that's not it. There was just those five VIK tickets. Every ticket is an amazing experience. Every ticket is a good time. And as I said before, if you have a uh, like a group of people, uh, you know, maybe you have like there's four couples and you all, guys all want to come out and support us, get a table and you'll get two tickets for free. Because when you buy a ticket, or when you buy a table, we only charge you for six tickets, but you get eight. Dinner, drinks, entry into the tournament, $1,000 cash prize, plus you get to hang out with all of us. Oh, by the way, Hannah is forbidden to bring any decorations. What? Yes, you're forbid forbidden to get bring any decorations. I meant to mention this earlier, but there was just so much going yeah, on. Yeah, what the heck, man? Yesterday for Halloween, oh. Hannah brought in these really cheap necklaces that she got from, I think, China. I did look. They did say made in China. She gave one to me. <laughs> Luckily, I wore it on the outside of my clothing. She gave one to Jay, which was little ghosts, and he put it on his naked neck, his naked neck, and he wore it all day, and you can go back. You, a lot of people were like, cool necklace, Jay. He's like, thanks. I got it from Hannah. And then uh, what Oops. happened was, as he was driving home, Jay, what happened? Did you notice it was like, what happened? It was red and itchy. All of a sudden, it just started kind of burning. Yeah. And I was like, what is that? And I looked in the mirror, and I was like, oh, my God, I've got a rash. Not just a rash. Ghost-shaped ghost -shaped -shaped rash. rash all on his neck where Hannah's Wuhan decorative necklace was hanging all day long. I didn't even know. I didn't even know. <laughs> so we, uh, first of all, you need to stay, in that, you need to stay in that room for 14 just days just in case. <laughs> Second of all, Hannah is forbidden to bring in any decorations for anything. What? It's, it's Ever? Hey, Follow the science. I'm on okay? a probation. Just period. follow the science. Quick break. Cord bird. 
Coming up right after this. How long is our typ- typ- typical? Typical. Hey, hey, y'all. How long is that typical segment we do? Uh, This will be the first half, so 14 minutes. I knew you knew it. Yeah. Good job, Amy. Got you, homie. <laughs> Take me, homie. Country, Country roadie. roadie. <laughs> Take me, homie. Country roadie. <laughs> Billy what? says China ghosted you, Jay. Oh. <laughs> so excited to have. Oh. I have no idea how that happened. Mm-hmm. It really was though. It was in, it was in ghost shape. Yeah. It was crazy. Did it? So did it start burning early on, or did you no, just notice it, like, it after the show? It was the in show? the car. Like I did not. It. I didn't feel anything during the show. It was just on the way home. Did you put like? That's just so weird. So excited to Did have the lights like over secret- here or something? Definitely not. No. Those lights were very weak. Just a guy Let's in Bay see. City said, uh, Hannah tried to off Jay. I did not try to off Jay. No. <laughs> totally. Where it let's you, the Hannah you text us. Uh, you sent us the text, right? Who? Me? Jay. Jay? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, of the picture. Look at that. It was bad. So bad. That's horrible. Brenna, it was not latex. It was some kind of no, it was just plastic. Chinese plastic. Yeah. Uh, it was plastic. Was that Chinese plastic? Plastic. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, it, it it looks like you have claw marks. Alan eighty four says Jay got the the COVID. Uh, Yikes. Whispers. Get vaccinated. Picker Giant says the radio <laughs> necklace, uh, or the necklace was radioactive. Hannah nuked Jay's neck. I didn't mean to. <laughs> Guys, I'm posting it in the Discord if you want to see it. Oh, Jay, can I post your neck in the Discord? Sure. Perfect. Jay's redneck. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Desert Line says Jay is allergic to plastic. <laughs> it's catching on. I love that. Oh, I forgot the apostrophe. Eh. I feel like Hannah. Excuse me. At least I put the right name. So excited to have. I really wanted to respond and be like, is this because I called you the wrong name? Oh. Squeak says allergies emerge suddenly at Jay's age. I'm now allergic to penicillin and latex. I learned the hard way. Very unpleasant, says Squeak. So you could just be allergic. No, you touch plastic every day. Yeah, I'm literally touching it right now. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody isolate that. <laughs> I'm literally Great. touching it right now. That. <laughs> Don't do it, David Mandarin. <laughs> Joe Relick says, why not? We already saw his toe. <laughs> That's true. Jay's malady of the week. Forty fifth deplorable. That's right. How would you know? <laughs> Did you see what forty fifth deplorable said? Hannah just wants to make sure that she gets employee of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Jay's neck looked like Braille. <laughs> Hannah, please see the below details for Mark's Wednesday appearance on the Whiskey Musings broadcast. Yeah. That's a cool password. It's a conference call? Are you asking me these questions? Oh, there's the questions that I'm supposed to answer? They're like the... uh, you know. This is great. I feel like Hillary Clinton at the debate. Right? Whoa. I get the questions beforehand. Lori McKinney says, Hannah, Jay's rash was because of Robert the doll. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Yeah, it was. <laughs> oh, no. It's because we didn't take Robert seriously enough. Liquor Giant says, neck pox is no folks. Fo- I can't. No joke, folks. I can't speak today. No folks jokes? No folks jokes. Was that... Homo dopo? Homo. 
Homo do fofo. Yeah, homo do fofo. Jay, ask Mark what he is drinking tomorrow night on hey, Whiskey Hey, Mark, musings. what are you drinking tomorrow night on uh, Whiskey Musings? I guess, well, bourbon's technically whiskey, so mm-hmm. I will be drinking bourbon, probably bullet. Uh, are you going to make it just straight bullet or? Yeah, I don't mess with mixers and crap. I don't know if you make like an old-fashioned or anything. No, just pull it. Just pour the this is old-fashioned. I pour it in a glass neat. and drink it the way they used to do in the Old West. Um, so, yes, neat. And that, yeah, neat. Okay. It's very, very neat. Um, but, you know, I had the uh, I had that Jaguars whiskey, which was really good. It was the orange whiskey. Oh, yeah, you said it was really good. From here in Florida, it was so good. But then I finished it, and I refused to buy anything else with their name on it. Um, <laughs> their, your status? <laughs> yeah. And then... Uh, but I have some. I have a little bit of that knob, uh, knob Creek, Creek. Yeah. the one twenty left. But it's I got to talk, so I probably shouldn't drink that. Um, oh, because that means that it's what sixty proof? No, it's one hundred twenty proof. Or sixty percent. One hundred twenty percent. No, one hundred twenty right? proof six or one hundred twenty proof sixty percent. Right. Yeah, because um, it can't be one hundred twenty percent. And then, I guess you're right. Uh, <laughs> And then, or I could go get something special. I don't know. What do you? What does everyone recommend? What's whiskey drinking? Whiskey. What are you drinking tomorrow? Colleen. Colleen said, "I can read Braille." Get over here, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> That's Jay's new Braille tattoo. Um, Jaguars fiz- whiskey has a bad finish. I was gonna get you Buffalo Trace as well for your birthday, and then I was like, I'm not this. Rich. Buffalo Trace is good. Pappy Van Winkle, that's what I Pappy Van Winkle. A- My brother has Pappy Van Winkle. He does? He does. Is he super rich? No. Well, rich, way richer than I am. Oh, yeah. Um, that's like three grand a bottle. I know. Also, it's really hard to find. I know. Um, but uh, what's your brother's address again? He's moving. Oh. <laughs> no, but he... Uh, oh, Whiskey says I will be drinking Crown Royal Black. It's oh. a special occasion. Oh. Uh huh. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> Did you just read what I read? What C I L? Yeah. Yep. Beluga vodka. Yikes! Vodka is not whiskey. Where entertaining meets informative. This show makes the listener feel like it's my show. You make bad news sound good. Mark K for three hours a day. Loving it! This is the Mark K Show. 855-940-MARK is our number. 855-940-6275. Bill's in Sanford, Florida. He wanted to comment on $20 for a blue check mark real quick. Uh, hi, Bill. How are you? Thanks for calling the Mark the hell was that bill you are you have for current events politics and entertainment love it i'm wondering if uh if uh, ian musk would go for a blue check mark for uh liberals and a red check mark for conservatives oh i like it like you could you could pick the color of your check mark based on your political affiliation yes that's a great idea. I'll, and make money. Yeah, and make I'll be honest with you. I have a feeling that, in fact, Hannah was delving a little more into it. What did you find out with the blue checkmark $20 a month fee that Elon Musk is proposing? What was it, Hannah, you said that he might also add in there? Uh, so I'm looking because he tweets a lot. But he said that there would be paywall bypass for publishers willing to work with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and that there will be a revenue stream to reward content creators, which I thought was really cool. Fantastic. Um, there's more. Oh, show the thread. Got it. Sorry, I'm not on Twitter a lot. Yeah, Hannah's not on Twitter. But you know oh, what's happening? Oh, go ahead. I found it. Yeah, go ahead. It says you will also get priority in replies, mentions, in search, which is essential to de- defeat spam slash scam, the ability to post long videos and audio, which is important for us, mm-hmm. and then half as many ads, which I thought was really um, interesting. And then it says price adjusted by country, proportionate to purchasing power. Okay, yeah, that's all the legalese. Uh, yeah. Bill, but I love your idea. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass that along. I mean, I don't, I'll just tweet it, but I love that idea that if you want, you can have a red check mark to denote that you're a uh, conservative. And if you're a liberal, you could use the blue check mark. Fantastic idea. Fantastic idea, Bill. Hey, thanks so much.
for the call. We really appreciate it. By the way, all of this, as much as people complain, is in an effort to do what Elon Musk and a lot of people have always tried to do, and that is remove fake accounts, fraudulent accounts, bots, Russian bots, uh, you know, North Korean bots, all of these people that have been manipulating the media, the, the misinformation crowd. They do it by creating accounts. When an account is free to create, it's easy for people, and I know you've seen the videos in China, in Asia, in Eastern Europe, of these bot farms where they just create and they add likes and you can go on and you can buy followers and it's just a way to cheat the algorithm. But when you start charging people, then nobody's gonna pay just to troll you. Nobody's gonna pay to create a fake account to follow you. It just doesn't, it's just no longer lucrative. Uh, something we found with our Locals group, by the way, if you follow us on Locals, markk.locals.com, you can see that there's a subscription service and then there's a premium service and nobody's, nobody ponies up money so that they control you. They just, they just don't do that. It makes more for a much more pleasant user experience. But again, Democrats want everything for free, and they believe that they're the most important uh, important part of any organization that they're a part of. That's why Stephen King is having such a such a hissy fit. 855-940-MARK is our number, 855-940-6275. Speaking of the, which, after the show today at 3 o'clock, about an mm -hmm. hour from right now, Hannah and I will be hosting a post-show live exclusive to our Locals group. We'll be answering more of your questions. We'll be talking about stuff behind the scenes, stuff we would never dare say on the air, but we have no problem saying it on Locals. Yeah. Uh, also, a little Q&A. That happens right after the show today. Go to markk.locals.com uh, about an hour away or so. But right now, so excited to have Secretary of State of the State of Florida, Cord Bird here. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Great to be with you, Mark. Yeah. Uh, first question that a lot of people have is, Secretary of State of a state, what do, do you like go out and invade other states? I mean, are we doing <laughs> negotiating with Alabama? What exactly... <laughs> Does the Secretary of State for the state of Florida, you know, what does that encompass? Sure. So it's a, I have, I have a pretty broad portfolio. Yeah. And actually, I think I have the best portfolio of any um, of any uh, secretary in, in Florida. So I have uh, uh, obviously elections. Mm -hmm. I have the division of corporations. Got it. I have the library systems, historical resources, yeah. arts and culture. I'm the state's uh, chief <laughs> protocol officer. So you talk about starting. Uh, yeah. You know, I had dinner recently with the Australian ambassador. So wow. uh, you know, we have a lot of a uh, lot of. Foreign countries want to do business in Florida, cultural exchanges in Florida. So um, I uh, deal with all of them. So you're the guy that basically they're like, well, who should we get to do this? Have, let Cord do it. Exactly. He's secretary of state. That just encompasses everything. Pretty much. Pretty yeah. Much, if yeah. it's not agriculture and it's not suing somebody, we know it goes to you. Exactly. That's, exactly. Pretty <laughs> much. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. This is a very busy time for Florida. In fact, you know, I've been here 15 years. I know people have lived there their whole lives. Never before has Florida been such a... Never has it, has it been as you know highlighted nationally, not just politically, but as the governor calls it, you know, the free state of Florida, the oasis of freedom. This has got to be a really exciting time to be involved in state politics. It is. Uh, I'm a I'm a fifth generation Floridian, but it, this is the the best time to be in Florida, and I and I get to be the cheerleader. I get to go out and talk about all the great things that are happening, just as the governor does, as far as. Uh, you know, as many, how many people are starting new businesses yeah. in Florida, people moving to Florida and registering to vote because they they want to live in a free state. So it is a very uh, it's a great time to be here. You mentioned elections and that's kind of your your I mean, we've got it with a big one coming up, of course, next week. And the last election, uh, the presidential election in 2020, a lot of people underestimated just how safe, secure and well run Florida's elections were to the point where they didn't even call the state till 10 o'clock, even though the the tallies had come in and we were pretty secure as to what was going on. How safe and secure are is the balloting in the election system here in Florida compared to the rest of the country, would you say? Sure. And uh, you know, the governor has said repeatedly since the 2020 election that that Florida got it right. Uh, and last week I finished uh, my tour around the state. So mm -hmm. I visited with all 67 supervisors of election in Florida, in their counties. I saw their operations, their security measures, met their staff. Uh, and, and I can say with confidence that that Florida is leading the nation on election integrity and security. So when we get the when we go and vote or I know a lot of people are already voting, but come election night, the polls close at seven o'clock, right? Seven o'clock Eastern. But remember, you have the panhandle we central do. time. So we always, they mess everything. I up, do. Those guys. <laughs> like there's this, this much of the state. They have to have their right. way. They have so to have I have always have to make sure I'm, I'm you know clear on that point. But yes, <laughs> seven o'clock and that first number that posts so about seven twenty, yeah. seven thirty. Those first numbers come out. And those are the vote by mail ballots and the early voting numbers that have already been tabulated. So under Florida law, the supervisors can start canvassing those votes, yeah. which is why we get our results in early. So we'll know that Ron DeSantis has been reelected by what, nine o'clock? 
So um, I, I'm, I'm neutral in my position. Of course so, are. Of course you are. We're all neutral. We will have results by, I expect, by about 9 o'clock. We will know the results of uh, in Florida. And where will you be on election night? So I will be in my office, in the uh, Secretary of State's office. Because you have to be neutral. Well, I have to. Well, I'm, I'm there. You know, we're, we're working the whole day. So yeah. I start about 5 o'clock in the morning, and we reach out to all 67 counties prior to the polls opening. Are you ready? Do you have everybody in place? Any issues? Any problems? And we monitor that throughout the entire day until the polls close so that if there are any issues, we can step in and be uh, responsive. But so you don't get to like go get a glass of champagne or? Uh, no, no, no we'll, like we'll, we'll be in the office all day long. That's what I did during the primary as well. All right. That's well, I'll have a glass of champagne. On you your can behalf. have one on my behalf. We'll, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe I'll have a couple. I'll celebrate on, on, uh, on Wednesday. Assuming yeah, there you go. Well. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, so that's very exciting. There was a big article or not a big article, but like a big hubbub about um, some of the new laws regarding uh, voting fraud. We have this new, what is it called? It's the Voting Fraud Task Force. Office of Election Crimes and Security. I knew you would know it. Yes. Office of Election Crimes and Security. And they were actually going back and finding people who had voted illegally and arresting them. I know it was all over, it was all over Joy. I don't want to say the news because it was MSNBC, (laughs) but it was all over one of those networks. What is that all about? Was that, were they literally breaking the law? Yes, they were. And so the... The governor and the legislature recognize that uh, there, there are people who vote illegally. And mm-hmm. despite all of the naysayers who say, no, this doesn't happen, it does happen. And we prove that with the 20 arrests. So um, if, if someone lies on the voter registration form, which is what happened in these 20 arrests, they lied. They were not permitted to vote. They said they were. Uh, we make it very easy to get on the rolls, difficult to get off. So yeah. there's due process to get off. And so some people play the game of, I'm going to go ahead and register. I know I'm going to get on the rolls. And they voted illegally. And- I think the, the 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 quickest way to undermine faith in government is to not enforce your laws. We yeah. see that in our you know in, in New York, California, these other states. Well, voting laws are no different, and we want those laws to be respected. And the governor wanted them enforced, and that's what we did with this new Office of Election Crimes. And it's I mean, working. I would argue election laws are probably even more important than like you know. Forget you don't have to the, the speed limit on I four. Don't worry about that at all. <laughs> I would rather you go out and catch the people that are. Right defrauding the election system. And this is what, like convicted felons or people who had their right taken away for whatever Correct. reason? Correct. These were, these were convicted felons, and these were individuals who committed either murder or sex, felony sexual offenses, which are not covered under Amendment 4. So that was part of the media not telling the whole story yeah. because Amendment 4 a few years ago. You're kidding. Right, right. Yeah, right. I know. Shocking, Wait a minute. Right? What? I the know. media didn't tell the whole story? <laughs> exactly. MSNBC left out the part that these were convicted murderers and sex uh the criminals, right, and they had wow. not had their rights restored, and and they voted. We know they voted because we have we have the record that that, yeah. that individual voted. And uh, people on um, felony probation are not allowed to vote. So there was an article today because now Florida Department of Corrections is having them sign an acknowledgement that they can't vote I mean, while they're on felony probation. And so you know now this some people are complaining about that. It makes a lot of sense, which is why so many people, I think, are annoyed by it. Right. Because here in Florida, we look at, I think, common sense legislation, common sense uh, enforcement, common sense regulation. And that's really people, for whatever reason, I don't know if you find this, but they can't handle that kind of right. thinking. Yeah, no, it is. It's, it's very common sense. How involved are you with the, uh, with the education debate about, you know, um, the Florida Rights and Education Act and what's going to be happening in our schools? Charlie Crist, we had a guy call in. He said, I got a mailer from Charlie Crist. And Charlie Chris said, here's my three-point plan for education. Number one, allow kindergartners to be uh, taught about gender identity. Number two, you know, keep the parents out of this, that, the other. Number three, and then he looked at it, he goes, these are three great reasons to vote for Ron DeSantis. Is that something that falls under your office as well? It does not. So I don't, I don't have any um, education directly under the Department of State, but right. I was a legislator for six years. I was in the Florida House and certainly voted on those measures and uh, my my public statement and my voting record is clear on those. And, and when, when asked, uh, when, you know, what's the best thing that you did as a legislator and it's school choice. I mean, yeah. Florida's leading the nation on that as well. And I think it's really important that parents have, uh, the, uh, the, the options to best uh, educate their kids. So as secretary of, as cheerleader now for the free state of Florida, and you have these corporations coming in, do you find that this law, this particular freedom that parents have, um, that's passed now and is being enforced, do you find that that dissuades people from coming to Florida? Or do you find that some companies are like, you know what? I like it. The people that work for us like it. We're going to invest and get opportunities in Florida. Or do people not even care either way? I, I think that just by the numbers alone, the sheer number of new corporations that uh, millions of new corporations yeah. that are incorporating in, in the last couple of years in Florida answers that question. Yeah, um, People are voting with their feet, moving here. I can tell you there's one statistic that I love to give. So 
there's $2.7 million per hour of new investment coming to Florida. The next closest state is Texas with $700,000 an hour. So we're beating Texas by $2 million, not a day, an hour of new investment coming to Florida. And I think that, that, that answers your question. If my math is correct, that's what, like $70 million a day? Right. Yeah. That's amazing. It is. That's almost what Elon Musk makes. Yeah. Almost. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is fantastic. So as far as, as far as the, uh, the census, because again, we're very excited. We, we had Kat Kamek in here a couple of weeks ago when, you know, her district was rearranged a little bit. We spoke with Aaron Bean. He's going to get a brand new district and, you know, odds are be the next, uh, be our next congressperson. So you've got now a state that is growing by leaps and bounds over the last 10 years with the census. Do we foresee in the next 10 years, potentially 32 electoral votes? Will we be redistricting again to make room for more representation? Where do you see the next decade or two for Florida? Sure. I mean, I think as the trends continue and as the population grows and at the next census, that will be rebalanced and as uh, that Florida will continue to gain uh, electoral um, seats in Congress. That's amazing. Are you going to be continuing to uh, serve as Secretary of State? Or, you know, Ron DeSantis has one more term and then he's got to go figure out something else to do. Right. And then somebody's got to take his place. Right. So Florida, I, I, I'm appointed. I was appointed by the governor in May. Yeah. So um, I serve at his pleasure. And uh, I, I will continue to serve as long as uh, the governor thinks I'm doing a good job. As long as he's pleased. With. You know, yeah. they, on a national level, and I don't know if you've heard this, but a lot of people think Ron DeSantis might run for president. There's also a national secretary of state, right? There is. There is correct. Okay. I was just checking. That's, yeah. But that's something you could potentially be qualified for. Yeah. Um, I, I think under the Constitution, I probably meet the qualifications, yeah. but I don't want to get ahead of myself. I, I've got an election on uh, next Tuesday, and I want to make sure I, that, that's uh, that what you're focused on. I'm not looking ahead. I'm, looking, right. I'm looking to next Tuesday. I would just say, if the phone ever rings in the middle of the night, maybe answer it. Oh. Because that could be. So when the governor calls and uh, <laughs> you know, asks, the, there's only one answer. Does he case. ever call you like at weird um, times and say, hey, I need you right away. Get to the headquarters. No, no, no. no, no. He doesn't like text you funny memes or anything like that? No, no, oh. he doesn't. No. All right. uh, did you get yeah. to go to the Luke Bryan concert? He was there. Did I did you not. See? I did not. I was in Tallahassee. So oh. I was at the, yeah. So God, you're like right. all work and no play. Yeah, it's all work right now. <laughs> it is. It is. Everybody else was playing. I'm working. No, I'm the same way. I do all the fun stuff yeah. and I make Hannah and everybody else do all the actual work. Cord Bird, first of all, thanks so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Thanks for all the hard work you've done keeping our election safe. Thanks for all the hard work you've done, uh, you know, bringing people here to the state of Florida. And I know that you're, you're what else, what, what else are you doing? You're doing so many things. Yeah. So, um, yeah, ele elections is number one. But, yeah. uh, you know, one of the things we have under the Department of State, we have the Florida Main Street program. So we're revitalizing Main Streets all over Florida, bringing small businesses back to to to, to local so people can shop local. Um, oh, it's, yeah. It's really it's a great, wonderful program. Uh, so if, if you you can look up and we have on the Department of State website, the, the Main Streets in Florida. And it's really good. Just once again, connecting. I mean, that's good too because our communities, our streets are safer than most state right. streets, and yeah. people don't like to go out shopping anymore and wander around. I mean, when in some of these cities, right? But you go to St. Augustine or something, it's you're no problem, right? And people want to buy local. They want to you know support their community, and it's it's a really great program. So that's one of the fun things I get to talk about. Do you ever get like calls from other states that say? Hey, we got a problem and you guys are doing it right. Can you fly in or can you fax me some advice or something like that? Oh, they, they ask us all the time. Yeah. I, I talk to secretaries around the country and, and they do. They look to Florida. How did you guys do this? Why did you do it? How do how can we follow what you're doing? So, yeah, they're, they're looking. And that's that's one of the, you know, the founders. I'm a big, big constitutionalist, big yeah. constitution guy, big founding fathers guy. And uh, they gave us 50 laboratories of experiment. And uh, Florida's getting that experiment right. And others are looking to us and wanting to copy what we're doing. So if it's like a state that you like, do you give them really good advice? But if it's like, you know, <laughs> well, if like, you know, Oregon's calling, you're like, oh, yeah. well, maybe let me think about it. Yeah, we, we probably hear from the states that are what are closer to us. Than probably the, so. Uh, than the ones that are less so. so. <laughs> well, Cordless, thank you again for coming. This was so much fun and good luck. I know you're not going to you don't need luck because you're going to be working. But good luck to everybody yes. in the administration that you serve. Uh, on election night. I tell everybody, if you're going to win, win big. So whoever's running, just make it big. No recounts. We want a, we want a, we want a big, easy night on, a, on election night. But uh, always a pleasure. Always happy to come on whenever you have a question. Cord Bird, ladies and gentlemen, Florida Secretary of State. Woo! Quick break. More I'm Marque so excited Show. to have more, uh, more Marque Show coming up right after this. Secretary. That was so awkward. Why is the loop on? I don't know. Stupid loop. Stalupid. Stalupid. Um, are you going to post? Have you posted that already somewhere or no? What? No, I haven't. I'll post it later. Okay. I'll let you know. Okay. Sounds good.
Loving this. This is great. What? Loving your, your your um, you know, your music that you're singing. Oh, random bullet. First time chat. This is refreshing to see and listen to in a sea of leftist liberal echo chamber that is Twitch politics. Wow. Welcome, random bullet. It's pretty cool. By the way. Yes. Oh, I guess. No. Uh, by the way, is Whiskey still watching? Yes. I believe so. By the way, uh, they preempted my show this weekend on Newsmax because there's two Trump rallies. And uh, so, therefore, I won't need to work on my show tomorrow night. So, I have all the time to hang out on the Whiskey Music Podcast. Ooh, that's exciting. Do you like that? It was very good, Hannah. <clears throat> I feel like my skin is itchy. Oh, it's because of your necklace that you wore yesterday. I didn't wear any of the necklaces. Oh, wait, what? You just made us wear them? I was wearing a whole uh, thingy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a whole get up. Did you get the necklace and the hat from the same place? No. Okay. Why? Did your head break out as no, well? No, I was just curious. Marie McAndrew wants to know if you won the lottery. I didn't win the billion. I may have won a million. I don't know yet, though. I have to check. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> what? what? I was clearing my throat. Are you making fun of me? <laughs> no, of course not. Why would I do that? What? Uh, B. Crespin says there was weed, weed residue on the necklace too, Jay. That's oh, right. hush. And then Jerry says, Jay, wear this. Jay, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no. People seem to have enjoyed that interview. Oh, it, it's super informative. I'm so glad. Guys, that's so great. <clears throat> we will post it on Locals later the week in this week, and uh, it'll be featured on um, Mark A. Saves the Republic probably on Saturday. We'll do a special Saturday podcast. Ooh, a special Saturday podcast. Ooh, yeah. Lovely. Oh, so you can do some special Saturday stuff. Man, this is going to be the quickest segment. So quick. Oh, my goodness. So quick. And then Alan says, Hannah to Jay, but did you die? Yeah, but did you die? <laughs> did you? <laughs> that was a good movie. Are we coming back? In 15 seconds. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. This is the Mark K Show. My name is Mark K. All right, so we went long with cord. It was like an extra long cord. It was like a 20-foot cord. Uh, so what? 
So we're gonna have a, we're gonna take one more quick break. But when we get back, ladies and gentlemen, really exciting information, really exciting news coming out of Arizona regarding the future of the Senate and which party will control it: the Republicans or the lunatics or the Democrats. Uh, we're gonna bring you that story. Plus, we've got some American trivia warrior and uh, Hannah's hottie topics on the way. Stay tuned to the Mark K Show. We will be right back. <laughs> What is that look on your face? What? I thought you said we weren't doing that today. I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't. I mean, maybe, maybe not. I didn't want you to stress though. Do you want American you said, Trivia Warrior? Yes, I do. How are we gonna have time for all of that? All right. Well, I we'll just keep it open. We'll see. <sighs> I literally was thinking to myself, "Wow, this is the best Tuesday ever." <laughs> well, oh, I can't wait, have it gets better. <laughs> My stomach's in knots now. <laughs> but isn't it better that it's just for five minutes than for the whole show? What, so you're just going to lie to me from now on? <laughs> hey, whatever works. Ah! Okay. Garlic Press says Biden added four extra states that didn't exist for those voters that don't exist. Wait, say that one more time. Biden added four extra states that didn't exist for oh, yeah. those voter for those voters that don't exist. <laughs> That's where all the dead people are. <sighs> <the vote. laughs> right? Must be right. the state of dismay. Did you say a state of dismay? Yeah, it's one of the states. <laughs> that was funny. Dementia might be another one. Yeah. What's your welcome from? What? Oh, it's from Moana. <laughs> mm. Oh. I was like, ba da 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 ba bum bum da 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 But I don't, know, I don't know the words. I just know the melody. That's all. What can I say except you're welcome? You're welcome. Yeah. That's all I know. You're welcome. It'll just keep on going. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> I'm done. It's perfect. What time is it? It's 2.31. Oh, my gosh. Zooming by. No, 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 no. John Batman. Castaneda. No, we did not get kicked off of Facebook. Not yet. No, Yesterday not. we did, but we're back. No, 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 no. Batman. No. What? No. What were you singing? No. 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 Why do I know that? What is that from? Ugh. Dun, 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 Jay, dun, 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 dun. Oh, video games. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. No. <laughs> yeah. Brenna, yes, today is locals. Today is locals, yes. Truth. Buddy we'll Wiser. Set you free. See you later, alligator. Super Mario. Mm hmm. I still can't believe that they got Chris Pratt to play Mario in the new one coming up. Did I hear from you that he didn't change his voice at all for it? Nope. It's a me, a Mario. I think that's very disappointing. Yeah, it'll still be funny. Hmm. Wish I could watch Whiskey's live show tomorrow. 
The heckle mark with the other whiskey warriors. Oh. Why can't you? I don't know why. Wait, who said that? April? No, W. Grow 508. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, Colleen. State of delusion. A catatonic state. Oof. Yuck. Liquor giant. Yuck, 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 yuck. <laughs> state of dis <laughs> despair. It's a me, a Mario. <sighs> Carla is telling you to sing it, Jay. Yes. Oh, nothing. Somebody said I probably wouldn't say Jeff. Why? Because it was Jeff that said it. Oh, of course. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Jeff. I bet these guys are a bunch of potheads. Who? These guys. What? Well, I don't know what guys you're talking about. Those guys. You know, the guys. We're entertaining meets informative. This show makes the listener feel like it's my show. You make bad news sound good. Mark K for three hours a day. Loving it! This is the Mark K Show. 855 mark is our number, 855 You know, we, uh, we, we, we have some really positive news coming out of Arizona, not just where Carrie Lake is taking a commanding lead, it appears, to be the next governor over Katie Hobbs, who's been hiding like Biden. Um, but with the uh, Senate race, Blake Masters and Mark Kelly, Mark Kelly, the incumbent Democrat, who uh, you know, has led pretty much the entire way, but narrowly. Narrowly. And after the debate performances, uh, Blake Masters had a really strong showing. A lot of people really, you know, kind of uh, kind of, uh, you know, warmed up to him. And he's been running almost like I said, neck and neck, a slim majority. In fact, there's two states which could be considered basically toss ups right now for the uh, for the Senate. And that is Arizona. And that is also Nevada, where uh, Adam Laxalt is now taking a slim lead. Um, over the incumbent as well. So Arizona is a very, very important race, and it's one that we've been watching. And if you if you imagine that that the Democrats, all in all, have just put a bad taste in everyone's mouth nationally, especially in Arizona, which is a border state, and you have Carrie Lake, who's going to drive a lot of conservatives to the polls, a lot of Republicans, a lot of red moving to the polls, you have to imagine that Blake Masters is in a really good place. And anything in such a tight race could really boost his momentum and change this and make it uh, not so much a toss-up, but more a, a a leans red or solid red pickup, which would change control of the Senate and the direction of the country. It would basically save us all from Joe Biden and the Democrats. And something happened yesterday, which, well, it's a big thing. You know, it's it's a bit, it's a little big thing, but every little thing counts. There was a third candidate in the race, a libertarian, a guy named Mark Victor. Mark Victor is a guy who is, uh, I mean, he's super libertarian. He's part of this live and let live global peace initiative. He's very much no war at all for any reason. Uh, just, you know, let every country be every country and take care of themselves and yada, yada, yada. And he decided he was going to drop out of the race. He's like, look, there's a week left. Uh, unfortunately, he may have already gotten some votes, but he's, he's dropping out now. One week before Election Day, he says, that's it. I'm out. And not only did he drop out of the race, but he formally endorsed the Republican candidate, Blake Masters. 
Uh, he had a phone call with him. They spoke for like 20 minutes. He talked to him all about his Live and Let Live initiative. Uh, Blake Masters seemed receptive to it. And so he announced today that Blake Masters gets a lift heading into the final week um, against Mark Kelly. This is another major boost of momentum as we consider our support, Mr. Masters said in a statement to the New York Times. Mark Victor, the Libertarian candidate, and Mr. Masters spoke on Monday for a 20-minute recorded conversation, uh, which they expect to publish. Mr. Uh, Mr. Victor, the uh, the uh, Libertarian dude, he's going to publish the conversation, and that is part of that's part of the uh, that was a condition of him quitting the race and throwing his support behind Blake Masters. I found Blake to be generally supportive of the Live and Let Live Global Peace Movement. Mr. Victor said in a statement, after that discussion, I believe it is the best interests, it is in the best interests of freedom and peace to withdraw my candidacy and enthusiastically support Blake Masters for United States Senate. Now, again, he didn't have a large portion of the vote. He didn't have, I even think, 1% of the vote in Arizona, but he had some votes. And in an, ele in an election that could come down to, I mean, just a handful of votes. In an election that could be recounted over and over and over again, every single vote matters. And if it's 5,000 votes or 10,000 votes that this guy was going to garner and now those votes go to Blake Masters, that is huge, especially, like we said, in a razor-thin uh, razor election, something that is so close, almost too close to call before the election's even over. Mr. Victor's underfunded campaign had a chance to make more of an impact than some other third-party candidates this year, in part because he was on stage for the race's lone debate. Uh, he made waves in the appearance by suggesting the age of consent is something that reasonable minds disagree on and should be up for a vote. As I told you, he's hyper-libertarian. Uh, Mr. Masters appeared to have gone to some lengths to court libertarian-minded voters and assuage any concerns from Mr. Victor. Now, the thing that's really interesting about this is that in most of these, whenever you have a third-party candidate, and we had a guy call yesterday to talk about Ross Perot and his impact that uh, he had in the, uh, you know, the Bill Clinton election. When you have a third-party candidate, um, it, you know, depending on where they come from, for example, the libertarian candidate typically will draw from the Republican uh, pool of voters. Libertarians and, cons I mean, the conservative wing. When you look at libertarians, they're basically saying, we want very, very little, if not no, government. We want the government to stay the hell out of our way, and that's in everything. Stay out of the way when it comes to our taxes. Stay out of the way when it comes to our lives. Stay out of the way when it comes to our bedrooms. And we don't want government intervention in anything. We don't want federal crap. No federal laws. No federal mandates. Give us liberty or give us death, hence the name libertarianism. And that's why it's a lot of people see it as a, as a hyper-conservative uh, movement. The closest we have probably right now that you would know of in the Republican Party is Rand Paul. Rand Paul doesn't want to send money to Ukraine. Ukraine has nothing to do with us. Rand Paul doesn't believe that we should be the world's policemen. Rand Paul doesn't want government meddling everywhere. He wants everybody to be left alone. He wants us to live with our liberty. The government should protect us, protect our freedoms, and give us as much freedom as possible to live, and that's that. Um, so when you have a libertarian third-party candidate, they tend to draw from the right. However, some libertarians are very free into other for example, movements, and they'll draw from the from the left. Uh, you know, sexuality, for example. They don't care about who you want to sleep with, where you want to sleep with, who you want to marry, and they don't think the government should have a say either. Drugs are another big issue that some libertarians are very high on. Well, I, that's probably, there's no pun intended. They're just, <laughs> you know, they're like, don't tell me what I can, can, can and can't smoke. Don't tell me what I can and cannot put in my body. It's my body. I'll do whatever the hell I want with it and with, every, and with you know, whomever I want. So it is trick. You could potentially get, uh, get you know, candidates from both party, depending on the candidate. But but this is this bodes well, especially for Blake Masters, Republicans in Arizona and also Republicans nationally, because it's another move forward to taking back the Senate. On the flip side. You know, the one thing that the Democrats always worry about is the Green Party candidate, which is the hyper liberal candidate. And we had, uh, you know, we had some questions about that in the last couple of elections. And, you know, there's always a Green Party candidate that will that will pop up and be more popular than anyone else. And the Democrats always try to buy that person off. You know, Bernie Sanders wasn't a Green Party candidate, but he's an independent still. A lot of people forget that about Bernie Sanders. Ain't no Democrat, that old guy. He's got a big eye next to his name. 
he just caucuses with the Democrats, and that's why he gets all the power. But he was the big concern was that Bernie Sanders was going to run against Hillary Clinton. So they had to buy him a house, $600,000 log cabin somewhere in Vermont or Colorado or wherever. Where they, they wrote him a big check, and he stopped whining and complaining about the superdelegates, and he went off and he supported Hillary Clinton, even though Hillary Clinton has a very different outlook politically on the world than Bernie Sanders does. And I'm pretty sure they did it again with Joe Biden. Uh, that guy just keeps banking. That guy just with what he does is he just goes into elections and, and gets a lot of momentum and then gets paid to sit back, relax and let somebody else win. I don't know if he'll be able to pull that off again. But, hey, you know, the clock's ticking. This may be his last this may be his last big last gasp at doing something like that. So this is, again, good news for what's happening in Arizona. Good news for what's happening with the Republican Party. 855-940-MARK is our number, 855-940-MARK. All right, before we get to American Trivia Warrior, there's something that, uh, we, like I said, we were going to do this. It was such a busy day. I didn't even know if we were going to get to it. In fact, I told Hannah or before the show, if there's time, we're going to get to uh, Hannah's hottie topics. But I know how much she loves it. And I know how it is, how much it's important to her career development. Yeah. So I didn't want it. Uh, I didn't want to miss out. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's time now for Hannah's hottie topics. That did not sound enthusiastic at all. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. Uh, no, Hannah always gets, you say that you get nervous of when we do this. I do. Show. I don't know why, because you just consider it to be a fluff segment. No, I didn't. That's not what I said. That is exactly what you said. We have it on tape. Verbatim. What, uh, what are you nervous about? Nothing. Okay. Well, isn't it better that you didn't know you were going to do this, so you weren't nervous the entire show, and you've just been nervous for like the last seven minutes? I, I, I guess. Okay, perfect. Are you ready? Yep. For those of you that are unfamiliar with this uh, or maybe new to the show, Hannah, who is an up-and-coming broadcast professional, <laughs> uh, this is a way for us to, you know, find out what the younger female, because look, I'm like an old dude. I don't know, 48. I'm like a middle-aged dude. And you hear my opinion all the time. And we get a lot of callers that have similar opinions. But we want to hear sometimes from the younger generation. We want to hear what the female, what the, what the, the softer analysis might be. Wow, Although very she's, progressive yeah, of you. She, well, she's pretty harsh, though. Um, <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to give Hannah 30 seconds and a list of topics. And she's going to just speak extemporaneously for 30 seconds or so on every topic. Are you ready? Yes. Here's your first one. Elon Musk charging 20 bucks for blue check marks. I knew this was going to be a category. Okay, uh, Elon Musk charging 20 bucks for the blue check mark. I personally think it's a good idea. I think that it's a great way to create revenue. I think that I love it because I know that there's been so many people who have less followers than me and less following and just all this different stuff who get a blue check mark, but I can't get one because I'm shadow banned because I'm a conservative. So they're less willing to give out, you know, a blue check mark. So if I could just pay $20 to get that blue check mark so I couldn't have these profiles that were just like, you know cloning me essentially i think that that would be such a blessing so for someone in my situation it'd be great that was very good you know what it's a, i hope he does it too because then that's like an easy birth like a christmas present or birthday present yeah, for somebody like, i paid for a year subscription yeah i got you a blue check mark for a year <laughs> uh that was very that was very well done thanks yeah uh are you ready for the next one i reckon here we go listen carefully lack of security at nancy pelosi's house I find this so shocking that she had such a lack of security. I mean, you'd think that she would, oh my gosh, sorry, I just had another thought. You would think that she would keep her husband protected, but honestly, maybe she just hates her husband secretly, and that's why she didn't have security at her house. Or maybe she did originally have security, but he like has a thing with this man, David. Maybe not. I don't really know. This is just conspiracy theory, Hannah. Um, but maybe he sent the security away. Maybe there was security, and it just went away. Um, for the nighttime because Paul sent him away. Sent him away. Conspiracy theory Thursday, Hannah is on Thursdays. Okay. Okay. Well, as I'm executive you my thoughts. As executive producer, I was good until you started into the conspiracy theory. You've got to keep the segments sorry, sorry, sorry. separated. Yes. One more. Are you ready? Yes. Here we go. The World Series. Of poker? Of <laughs> baseball? That's the one. I don't even know who's in it. Uh well, my favorite team is the Mariners, and they've never been to the World Series. Uh, I liked Ichiro. He's not there anymore. I can't talk about this. I don't know anything about the World Series. <laughs> There's a lot of games during the World Series. Japan's typically pretty good, right? J like Japanese teams. <laughs> I don't know their teams. <laughs> Can we be done with this part? I don't know anything about it. I'm sorry. The Japanese teams are really good during the World Series? That's Aren't the Olympics. They? You're thinking of the Olympics. No, I thought like Japan has like baseball teams, don't they? During the Olympics. 
The World Series is the the uh, national was it the uh, National Baseball oh, yeah. uh, right. League, MLB. What is it called? Major, Major League, League Baseball. Baseball. Yeah, I don't pay but attention. But World Series, I just thought Japan. Well, we have a lot of players, and I'm done. Quick break, folks. More Marque <laughs> show right after this. <laughs> you knew I was going to know nothing about that. Yeah, I know. Why would you do that to me? It's the Phillies and the Astros. That would I know. Mark. Yeah. You're in hot water, bud. Why? Guys, <laughs> I had three cat. That would have been a D on a test. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Yuck. All, All right. right. Well <coughs> I have trivia pulled up. Oh, yeah, we're going to have to jump right into it. Yeah. So much today. It was like so much stuff. Right? No, I was just thinking about a poker. What are you talking about? <laughs> that was so funny. I, I like that you went there. That was a, that was your first thing. The Little League World Series. <laughs> I genuinely didn't know. I'm so sorry. Yikes, Alan. Guys, I'm really sorry. When does? Japan play the Yankees. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Guys. <laughs> and then I just sound so racist. I was like, well, Japan's pretty good, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Japan <laughs> oh my God. I'm so funny. sorry. That was absolutely oh. horrible. <laughs> Yikes. Oh, man. Some people have had to say NY. Some people says SF. Some people say J for Japan. <laughs> Thanks, Desert Lion. I appreciate it. Um, Desert uh -huh. Lion says nobody important cares about the World Series, Hannah. Well, Joe Biden is attending the game tonight. All the more oh. reason to not care. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Guys, I'm so sorry. I like playing baseball, but I don't super enjoy watching it. You know what I like playing? What? Shot put. Shot? <laughs> no, shot. <laughs> shot put. Shot up. <laughs> uh, Florida Renegade says breaking. Saudi Arabia has shared intelligence with you with U.S. warning of imminent Iran attack. W WSJ reported. Aw, Jer, that was so kind. Hi, Robert. Guys, I'm not racist. Who said you were racist? People be making comments. Mm. I didn't mean to be racist, at least. How is it racist to say Japanese people are good at baseball? I can give you another example. I'm just saying. I don't think that, that that's where racist. it would be racist if it was a different race. L. Myers, very funny. <gasps> Galen. Thank you, B. Crespin. Dang, how much time are we going to have? About four or five minutes. Oof. Oof. We're all about to die, and Hannah developed a stutter. I know. I noticed that, too. Thank you, Colleen. <laughs> What's my Venmo? I figured, Rachel. Um, let me look. My mom texts me. She goes, share your thoughts. I did. <laughs> Venmo. Uh, I got it. It's at Mark Kim. Okay. Well. Everybody Venmo me real quick just to check that that's my Venmo. <laughs> Let's just I was going to suggest, why don't you Venmo me at mine, and then I can let you know what your Oh, what see, your that's name one is. way to do it, too. Mm -hmm. My way is easier, though. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Let's work on my part. W. Grow. Stop. <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> Jer. Did you... Um, what's your Venmo, Mark? His Venmo is at Mark K. Yeah, it's really easy. M-A-R-K-K-A-Y-E. I think I sold my Raiders my, uh, tickets for this weekend. 
Oh, good for you. Yeah, we're good. You don't think uh, the Jaguars are going to beat the Raiders? That's a sounds like a definite no. Do you? <laughs> I mean, I I don't even think Panthers are going to beat whoever they're playing. I've stopped watching. Man, I'll tell you what, Panthers had that game wrapped up. I know. decided i don't care what's going on i don't care if nuclear war has been declared i don't care if donald trump is coming back to announce his candidacy we will from now on every tuesday make sure we have time for hannah's hottie topics no uh... because <laughs> it's just too good by I the way so be glad. uh brian on our uh, on our rumble feed wants to know when the yankees are playing japan <laughs> listen uh, i remember the world series 1968 yankees played japan it was amazing it was one of the best games i ever I Can remember, we move on? I remember walking in, getting a hot dog and a sushi roll. How would I <laughs> just enjoying a nice sushi at the, burrito at the ball. Yeah, sushi eating. perfect. Yeah, that was just uh, wow. Anyway, so uh, hey, listen, Hannah. Yeah. It, that was very well done. Are, are you ready for some trivia? Are you? I'm ready. Jay, are you ready? I hope so. I guess really the question is, is Jay ready? Oh my gosh! Let's just get on with it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is that time once again. I can't believe how quickly this show went. By the way. Yeah. I can't believe how quickly the show went today. It went so fast. Uh, but we've got we've to end it the way we always do. A head-to-head -head battle of the wits. Jay versus moi for the uh, title of current week's American Trivia Warrior winner. The trophy. And really, let's face it, our self-respect is on the line. Um, Hannah, the first question, please. In what month is the official first day of summer in the June. northern hem... Yep. Great job. Oh, off to a rip-roaring start. Ooh. Which city in Tennessee is the country music capital? Nashville. That is correct. Uh, what is the name given to a screwdriver with a four-pointed pad? Head. Yeah. Okay. What is the name of the Cheetos Cheetah? Chester. Chester. Oh, that was a dead tie. Sorry. Uh, next question. In 2016, who portrayed Donald Trump on the TV variety show Saturday Night Live? Alec Baldwin. That is correct. Uh, which... Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was right. I apologize. Was we... Finger slipped. Which is the largest country in Africa by area? It's hard. Sudan. No, man. Nigeria. No, it is Algeria. I knew it was an area. Yeah, sure it was. Okay. Uh, what <laughs> is... Oh, it was an area. I got the wrong area. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, what is the name of the prince in Disney's Sleeping Beauty? Charming. No. <sighs> William. No. Albert. Philip. <laughs> oh, Philip. Just naming like British <laughs> princes. Okay. Uh, who shot the only 58 in PGA Tour history? Hint, it was in 2016 at the Travelers Championship. What was the first part of the question? You stopped me. Like, you threw your hand in Sorry. my face. Uh, who shot the only 58 in PGA Tour history? In 2016? Mm hmm. I have no clue. Rory McElroy. No, it's Jim Furyk. Oh. All right, next question. Uh, which California national park shares its name with a U2 album? Joshua Tree. That is correct. Oh, sorry. Okay. Man. Jay, how many do you have? Four. Holy cow. Oh, man. What's happening? I don't know. Uh, who is often considered to be the first... Oh, my gosh, I'm just going to restart. Who is often considered the first to become a billionaire by writing books? J.K. Rowling. Yes. <laughs> Killing it. <laughs> What building is considered to be the first skyscraper? The Chrysler building. No. I have no idea. It is the home insurance building in Chicago. Hmm. Fake news. It's real news. <laughs> uh, what does the orbital cavity contain? The eye. That is ah. correct. A single piece of coiled DNA is known as what? Helix. No. Oh. Ooh, wow. Uh, uh, chromosome. That is correct. All right, next question. Oh, no, I'm losing. All right. Oh, uh, uh, hurry, you're sorry. trying to fake. What you're trying the, to waste time no, so he is, wins. What is the name of the bar that Homer Simpson Most frequents? Most Tavern. Oh. That is correct. Ah! Amber, a golden yellow gemstone, forms from what fossilized substance? Tree sap. That is correct. Come on, Jay. Who played the role of the bodyguard in the 1992 movie? Kevin Costner. 
Oh. I think that was Mark. I'll take it. Uh, to the nearest hundred, how many people survived the Titanic sinking? Hmm. 800. No. 600. 700. All right. <laughs> Sorry, uh, guys. Lame question. Uh, what? We have two questions left. How many do you have? Seven. Damn. Oh, my gosh. What is a young whale called? A calf. A calf. I heard Jay first. Damn it. Stop then, that. Which U.S. state is unofficially nicknamed the Yellowhammer State? Montana. No. No idea. It's Alabama, but that's okay because you know what? Yeah. Jay wins. <laughs> Woo-hoo. Wow, what did you put on that necklace that infected his neck? <laughs> Smart things. Oh, wow. All right. Congratulations, Jay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. We will see you tomorrow, everybody. You know, that was good. It was just that Jay was faster today for some reason. He was so quick. I don't know what it was. It's not that I didn't know the stuff. It's yeah, that yeah. he answered quicklier. 100p. Quicklier. Quicklier. Bye, guys. Uh, join us on Locals. Go, oh, yeah. Jo- guys, join us on Locals. We'll badmouth Jay. Um, <laughs> and we'll see you. Uh, and we'll see. You. We'll talk about how Jay cheats. And we'll talk. Oh,